This will be the year. It's the year that you're actually going to stick to those resolutions because I know it's that time of year where you've got the good intentions. This is gonna be the year that you're gonna get organized, save money, and eat healthy. But if you don't have a plan and a system in place, in a week or two, those resolutions are going to flitter off. Today, we are here to give you that plan, to show you the system so that you can stick to those resolutions and make this the year you finally make it happen. We're here to show you how you can save money, save time, and save a lot of that mental space that you have been losing over the last couple of years. It is really hard to cook for two people. There is the planning that you have to do, but not just that, it's the what do you buy so that you don't have leftovers for days? What do you make so that you aren't wasting food? And it's my understanding that there's a lot of DoorDash happening when it's just the two of you. Um, in Canada, it's Skip the Dishes. I'm not sure what the equivalent of DoorDash or Skip the Dishes or Uber Eats is in the UK and Australia. Australia because we know you're watching as well but whatever that meal delivery service is we it's want happening. to save you from that save you from the cost of that and the guilt that goes along with always eating out or ordering in so we're gonna give you the skills today stick with us and this is going to save you so much time energy and mental space you will be really really glad you did this the first meal that we are going to make today is a chorizo Spanish rice. Now, this was an invention, it's delicious, but it came about because I was at the grocery store and they had this sale, they call it Plenty for 20, and they put different cuts of meat or vegetables on sale. You can buy four packs for $20, so that's just $5 a pack, and it just so happens it was also 15% off day. So I also got 15% off that $20 for the four packs of meat. So a lot of what we're using here today is in that, and we're gonna also be sharing tips this whole video on how you can save that money, and we're gonna make more than a month's worth of meals today for less than $100 for both of you. Yay! Yay! And that means that if you are using these to cook for one, you've got two months of dinners for less than $100, which is pretty amazing. That is pretty amazing. Because really, if you look at it and you're honest, what are you spending now on groceries and what are you spending now on takeout and delivery apps? It's probably more than $100. I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is so, so delicious. So what you're gonna do is you're going to mix this together in a large bowl. I've kind of doubled this recipe if you were making it for a family. So I've quadrupled it in making it for two so that you can end up with four dinners from this. But because we are splitting it into individual or double portions, we are making it in a bowl first. So you're gonna mix all these things into a large bowl. You're gonna put in there some sliced chorizo sausage. Because we had gotten ours so inexpensively, it wasn't cooked, so I did need to cook it first, cool it, and then slice it. Added that into the bowl. Then you're going to add some diced tomatoes, green chilies from a can, diced red pepper, some chopped onion, some cooked rice, again, you're gonna allow that to cool before you mix that in. Chili powder, cumin, salt, and pepper. You're gonna mix that all up together in your bowl. Everything in here is already cooked so that on the day you go to make this, it's going to be so easy to reheat. You're gonna divide this into four bags. Each bag will feed two people and then you're going to take out as much air as you possibly can from the bags because when you're cooking for your freezer, air is the thing that causes your freezer burn. Once you get that sealed, you get this into your freezer and you can move on to the next recipe. But on the day you go to cook that, all you're gonna do is thaw it and you can heat it in the microwave, you can heat it in a skillet or a stovetop pot, or you could cook it on the keep warm setting in your slow cooker. Now, if you are new to freezer cooking, there are a few things you need to know to make this way easier and save a lot more time. 
One of them is that if you choose recipes with like ingredients, then you're gonna save time. You're gonna be able to save money because you can buy them in bulk. Yes. You save time because when you prep the ingredients, you can prep them all together. You can have a night of prep and then assemble the meals the next day. You can make it fun and turn on some music when you're doing your prep and assembly. And for these, we have multiple meals that needed rice. So we cooked all the rice up all at the same time and had it ready to go for those meals. Same with if you're using ground beef in multiple recipes, you just brown it all cool it and then it's ready to throw into your recipes and things like chopped onion. You always say, if you're going to chop one onion, you might as well chop two or three. It's the same cutting board. It's the same knife. You're only washing the dishes once and that saves you time on the night you go to cook it because it's already done. Absolutely. Speaking of rice, mm -hmm. let's get to the next recipe using the rest of our rice. As Charlotte said before, she used a recipe with rice. We're going to use another recipe with rice. But I promise by the end of this video, stick with us because there's going to be so much variety. You are going to be shocked by what you can have in your freezer. You're not thinking I'm going to eat the same thing every day. No, you're not. I promise. I promise. It's going to be really, really great. So this next recipe with the rice is just chicken fried rice. So with the rest of the rice that we had, we're going to put it in a large bowl. We're going to add into it some chicken that has been cooked and cubed the night before. We're going to add in some onion, some carrots, and we would add celery to this, but Charlotte is allergic, so we skip that when we are making meals for ourselves. And that is the other nice thing about freezer meals is they can be customizable. They are customizable and personalized to you. So if you are also allergic to celery, you can skip it and that's okay. We're going to also add in some chopped water chestnuts, frozen peas, minced garlic, a little bit of oyster sauce, and some soy sauce. We're gonna mix that all together and then divide it evenly among our bags. And I started out putting this into four bags and as I got looking at it and I thought, you know, that is not gonna feed two people, I'm gonna dial it back a bit and make it for three bags. So we lost a meal on one end, but then the other three meals are a little bit more satisfying. So again, you can eyeball these and say, that doesn't look like enough food or there's no way we're gonna eat all that, I'm gonna divide it again. And then you have another meal. So it really is up to you based on your knowledge and what you're comfortable using and eating to make it for yourself. Now that we have our container of cooked cubed chicken open, we're gonna continue with it because when you are making freezer meals, we really recommend sticking with the protein at hand and using it all up. That way you're not cross contaminating things. It's not going to sit on your counter too long out in unsafe temperatures and you can use it all up and it feels like there's a sense of accomplishment because you're like, okay, we're done with the cooked cubed chicken and you're on to the next thing. What we're going to make here is chicken noodle soup casserole. And you might think that this sounds really strange, but I promise you it is so tasty. It is so delicious and it's comfort food. It is, it's got vegetables and it's got some mushroom soup in it and it's got some pasta and of course it has chicken. So to start out in our bowl, we're going to put in some cooked pasta. Now here is a big tip for cooking pasta when you're making freezer meals and you're going to be freezing the pasta. You must undercook it. These egg noodles call for being cooked for 10 to 12 minutes in boiling water. That 10 minutes is that al dente. I cooked these for eight because if I cook them to the full term to al dente or even to that 12 minute mark and then we reheat them later, they're going to be mushy. So this is one of the tricks that we can give you to help you prevent your pasta from becoming mushy. Um, asterisks though, uh, gluten-free pasta does not freeze well. It does not reheat well. Really, if you're going to make this one, make it fresh with the gluten-free pasta because it'll work best that way. So we start out in our bowl with our undercooked pasta noodles. We're going to add in one to two chicken breasts that have been cooked and cubed. In our estimation, about a cup of cubed chicken is about a chicken breast. Now, we all know that breasts can vary in size. I'm just talking about chicken breasts. Sometimes they're gigantic, sometimes they are um, teeny tiny. It depends on the age of the chicken, where you buy it, all of those things. So as a general standard, we estimate about a cup is a cooked chicken breast. Now, if you wanna mound that cup up and have it be a heavy cup, go right ahead. That's fine, nobody's gonna count your chicken breasts, okay? So you put in one to two cups of your cooked chicken breasts. You're going to add in frozen peas, some frozen corn, a can of mushroom soup, and you are gonna mix that sucker up. You're gonna put them into medium or quart size freezer bags, label them up on how you would wanna cook them on the day of cooking, which this is really just a reheat because your corn and your peas have been parboiled and everything else is cooked. So you really just need a really good reheat on this and this is good to go. This is all of these actually. This one and the rest of them are also so great for taking for work lunches. 
yeah, you're right. You just need a microwavable bowl at work and you could do this right there at the office. And it's gonna smell really good and people are gonna walk by and be like, oh, what you got for lunch today? And you're gonna be like, they have freezer meals. <laughs> and then you're gonna show them our videos. Absolutely. <laughs> and then you're gonna tell them to subscribe. You should subscribe while we're talking about that. <laughs> anyway. If you've been considering joining the Freezer Meals 101 Club, today is the perfect day. Right now, for a limited time, we are throwing in our entire collection of meal plans. That's 27 meal plans and two digital cookbooks absolutely free. That's a value of over $200 and it's yours just for joining the club today. Head on down to the link in the description below. We can't wait to see you there. Okay, we are moving on. When I was at the grocery store and had that awesome plenty for 20 sale, I also saw that they had two for one on the huge family size gnocchi packages. So of course I got two for one and I got 15% off the one I did pay for. So that was a score. <laughs> What we're gonna do with this gnocchi is make our delicious gnocchi sausage skillet. We are gonna mix it together in a bowl again so that we can divide it out into bags. We're gonna mix some browned Italian sausage that has cooled after browning. You can use mild or spicy depending on your preference. Then some of that potato gnocchi. Now with what the recipe called for, even though I was doubling it, I couldn't use both packages because they were the family size and they were giant. So we're gonna save some of that aside for later and I'll invent a recipe at the end using that. Then you're gonna add some chopped onion, minced garlic. We use minced garlic from a jar because it's a lot faster and when you're assembling these, time is of the essence. Some diced tomatoes from a can, a bit of chicken broth, some basil and pepper. You're gonna mix that all together in your bowl. You're gonna get it divided out among four bags because we did double this. And then on the day you go to serve this, you are going to need a few extra ingredients. You're gonna to need to have some shredded mozzarella cheese, some Parmesan cheese, and some fresh spinach because all you're gonna do is heat this in a skillet for only five or six minutes, then you're gonna stir in some of that spinach until it wilts, and then top it with those cheeses, cover it so the cheeses can melt, and in five more minutes, your dinner is done. That means that in about 12 minutes, your dinner is completely on the table and ready to go. And this is a full meal because you've got your protein in there, your carbs, your vegetables, and it's really good. It is so good. It is definitely one of our new favorites from last year. Absolutely. Now, for these next recipes that we're gonna do, they are ones that are not quite as full of meals. And so, we want to show you how versatile this can be and how this can encompass like everything, all the things. You can even freeze your sides ahead. So we're gonna make our garlic mashed potatoes today, which are really an amazing recipe, but we're gonna show you a really cool trick of how to make these so that you can make single or double portions instead of having a whole family sized serving. So what you're going to do to make these is you're gonna peel and cube your potatoes, get those into a pot with some water, bring those to a boil and cook them until they're soft. Then you're gonna drain them and mash those potatoes with some butter and then stir in some sour cream, garlic, chives, salt, and pepper. Now that you have those ready, you're going to let them cool and then we're gonna show you what you're gonna do next. So we've got our mashed potatoes. And we're just going to take this large cookie scoop and scoop mounds onto a parchment paper lined cookie sheet. Once you get this scooped, they don't have to be perfect. Actually, nothing about freezer meals have to be perfect, which is kind of the nice thing. And it makes it so that everybody can do these. Now, the trick here is to make sure you put it on parchment paper because it won't stick to your tray and it can be removed easily because what we're going to do next is put these directly into the freezer just like this and allow these to freeze rock hard and then we're going to pop them off of the parchment paper and into a resealable freezer bag 
So when you go to make your meals, you are going to automatically have a side that are gonna taste just like your mother's mashed potatoes. And you can take out as little or as many as you need. If you've got company that night and you need to take out six mounds, go right ahead. If it's just you, you take out one or two mounds depending on how hungry you are. So that's the beauty of doing your mashed potatoes this way. Now, if you don't have a fancy scoop, you could use any kind of measuring cup, you could use an ice cream scoop, you can use a tablespoon out of your cutlery drawer and that would be a-okay. When you go to reheat these, they can be reheated in the microwave, they can be reheated in the oven or on the stovetop. You can put them back into the stovetop and just slowly warm them, stirring occasionally, because if you're having company, you might take out five or six of these, or if you're feeling really hungry. <laughs> but really, you can take out as many as you want, and you may just need to stir them a bit so that they aren't watery. Otherwise, they are really easy to do. And look, they don't have to be perfect on the tray. We can put them wherever because they're not going to like expand or anything in the freezer. <laughs> and the whole point of freezing these individually is so that they don't stick together in the bag. If we had put these like this into the freezer bag, they would maybe touch and freeze together. So there's actually a lot of freezer meals that we freeze individually and then put them into a bag later on and that they don't stick. We do it with quesadillas, uh, waffles, pancakes. You can bread chicken fingers and fish sticks, freeze them individually, and then put them into your freezer bag because that's how they do it in a facility. You can do that in your kitchen. We will do the rest off camera because there's we a lot here. Made a lot, <laughs> you know, because there's never too many mashed potatoes in your life. That's true. Do you know my cousin had a hollow leg just for mashed potatoes? Oh. We said that every Thanksgiving because he would just have a plate. He would eat his regular meal and then he would have a whole plate of just mashed potatoes. And we're like, where do you put all that? And you know, they say the hollow leg. Well, his hollow leg was just for mashed potatoes. There you go. Yeah. Now, if you want to make freezer meals for one, whether you live on your own or you're bringing meals to work with you, we're gonna pop a video right up there that shows how you can take something like those mashed potatoes and put them into trays that are freezer safe, dishwasher safe, microwave safe, and you can make your whole meal in there. So you can have your meat, your vegetable, your rice or your potatoes, and you've got homemade TV dinners. It's super handy, but if you're cooking for two, it's a little bit nicer to have the option to take out as many mashed potatoes as you need and pair them with something like meatballs. So what I'm gonna do for the meatballs is, <laughs> this is almost not really a recipe, it's a bit of a cheat, but it still saves money and time and it's, you're cooking at home, sort of. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna buy pre-made meatballs. Now, if you wanna get extra credit and make your own, that's fine too. But we have bought pre-made, pre-cooked frozen meatballs. We got ours at Costco in the giant container. We're just using what we had left over from some other freezer meals we made. So if you are just cooking for one or two, you might not want to get the Costco size bag. But there is a way, because we're gonna show you right now, how to get the Costco size bag and make use of it all. And it doesn't just mean having dinner parties every week for the, for the rest of the year. <laughs> exactly. All we've done for this is we've divided our meatballs into quart size freezer bags. We got enough for five different meals out of what we had left in the bag. I put 12 or 13 meatballs in each bag, figuring that that's probably enough for two people as long as you pair that with some sides. And then all I did was I took some barbecue sauce and dumped it into three of the bags. So you've got barbecue meatballs, voila! And then some thick teriyaki sauce and poured that into the other two bags. And then we've got teriyaki meatballs. And there's enough of the sauce left over to spoon onto your mashed potatoes for either of those. So as long as you pair this with a side salad or some frozen peas or steamed broccoli, you have got a full meal. Meatballs, mashed potatoes, and veggies. That is so super simple. And you're not limited to barbecue sauce and teriyaki. <laughs> you could do um, honey sesame. You could do um, sweet and sour and pineapple. Do you know? Growing up, we always had one of those cans of 
the VH pineapple sauce in our cupboard and it was my mom's fast way of, you know, throwing it on some cubed up chicken and heating it up and bam, there was our protein and it went with rice because then you could sauce it on. And there are ways to make things so super simple and get it in your freezer. If you do want to make fancier sauces for your meatballs, we have real actual recipes for sauces on our website and in our Freezer Meals 101 club. What the club does is it gives you a system. So if you're new here and you haven't seen our videos before, our Freezer Meals 101 club is what allows you to take our tried and true freezer meal recipes, choose which ones you like depending on your preferences. You can also filter for things like low carb, gluten-free, vegetarian, you can filter by protein, all different ways depending on what you're wanting. You can even type in pre-cooked into our keyword filter and it'll filter all the recipes like that chicken noodle soup casserole or chicken fried rice where all the ingredients in there are already cooked and those ones divide so nicely for one or for two. But you don't even need to necessarily do that because you can also change the serving size for every single recipe there. And then it will print off your shopping list and your prep list for that custom meal plan. And then the very best part, in our opinion, is, is the labels because each of the labels has the recipe name on it and it has cooking instructions and it has little tips on it. Like for our Mediterranean chicken, for example, it lets you know that you're going to want to put it on a sheet pan with some baby tomatoes and some feta. So you will know that those are things that you need to pick up and add to the meal before you cook it because it's right there on the label. It really is our favorite part. And the label has the date on it because freezer meals are good for between three and six months. So then you'll know when it went into your freezer and you'll know to eat the oldest meals first. That's a really great tip. I think it's really brilliant if I do say so myself. And of course the club saves you so much money because you can get the club for $9 a month or $79 a year. $9 a month is less than the cost of going through the drive through one time that month. It's less than going through and getting two coffees at Starbucks. <laughs> True story. <laughs> it really is. And so what we are finding in our Facebook group and on YouTube, um, our comments are things like, I can't believe how much money I'm saving because I can catch a sale or I can plan ahead or I'm using all of the produce that I buy and I am not throwing it out and we are not hitting the drive through So really, it does save money. And if you get the $79 a year option, it's even less than the $9 a month. So it just makes great sense, especially if you're one of those people who right now are eating out a lot or ordering in a lot because this is one of the fastest ways to kind of do a makeover on your budget. <laughs> That's true. And speaking of budget, I was able in that plenty for 20 sale to get some chicken. And so they're not giant packs when you get them in the plenty for 20, of course, but I was able to get a couple packs of chicken. I didn't know at the time what I was going to do with them, but we have so many chicken recipes. I knew I could just click on the chicken tab in the club and <laughs> populate them up. And so we decided to do lemon pepper chicken. This lemon pepper chicken is my all time favorite freezer meal because it does freeze really well and when you go and cook it up, because it's raw in there, when you go and cook it up, it just tastes so fresh. Now, typically this is one you could do in the oven. Um, I really prefer to do it in a skillet and because the chicken that we have here actually came as chicken breast strips, like they're just sliced. It's not like stir fry strips, it's just sliced chicken breast. It's perfect for the skillet. So into your bag, you're going to add your chicken strips and then you're going to add some lemon juice a little bit of minced garlic, some lemon pepper, and a teeny tiny bit of cayenne pepper. Now, this is a killer one to make with the mashed potatoes that we just made. And then you make a salad and some steamed veg, and this is your meal. And it really is so fast, and it's healthy, and it's just good protein, and it's really tasty. You could also do this one with full chicken breasts or chicken thighs, and you can do it for chicken wings. Yes, you can. And I've even done this one on the barbecue. It's awesome. It is really awesome. This next recipe is our baked tortellini alfredo. We've been making this one for a long a time. A really long time. And it is, it's a staple. It's one of the ones that are just like recurring and we keep using it over and over again. And 
when I first had this one, like Charlotte introduced me to this recipe, the first time we had it, it was one of those ones that I started making in between our mega sessions because we liked it so much and it's so easy. And it's super, super versatile because I'm gonna show you how you can change this up so that even if you made this every month, it would not taste like you're eating the same thing over and over and over again. For this, you are going to mix together in a bowl your tortellini. Um, we use the fresh tortellini that you get in a three pack at Costco, but you could also use frozen if you preferred. This is just a cheese tortellini. Then we are going to add in what we call your mix-ins. Now this is what I mean when I say versatility because you can use sun-dried tomatoes, you can use bacon, you can use frozen peas, sliced mushrooms. What else have we done? Chicken, um, pesto, spinach. Mm -hmm. So many possibilities. There is a list with the recipe and the recipe will be in the description down below. So you can go there for more inspiration for the mix-ins, but you're going to add in your mix-ins. So today we are using some cooked cubed chicken because we have it and some crumbled bacon because bacon. And then you're going to add in two jars of Alfredo sauce and some shredded mozzarella cheese. You're gonna mix that all around and then you're going to divide this into foil containers. The reason that we're using foil containers for this one is because we're gonna sprinkle each one with some Parmesan cheese and then get a lid added onto that. And then the day you go to cook this, you can actually bake them from thawed or frozen. If they're frozen, you're just gonna add a little bit of cook time. The tortellini cooks up in the sauce. So this is super, super easy. Depending on what your mix-ins are, this can be a full meal. If you've got a lot of vegetables mixed in there, then it can be your full meal. As we have it here today, you might want to add a side salad or some kind of green, <laughs> but. Eat something green, but it is very colorful on its own. It is very pretty. It is. We use the tri-color tortellini, so you're right. It is very colorful. It's very pretty, and it is something that you could serve to company because it is that good. Mm -hmm. You could serve it, like, if your parents are in town, and you could serve it, you know, like, or another one you could take for lunch. Um, Not as easily because you do need an oven for it, but mm -hmm. your husband's work has an oven. He, yeah, they have a full kitchen. At his, he works at a plant and it's shift work. And they do, they have a full kitchen and a barbecue and a smoker. Like it's- Oh my. <laughs> oh yeah, they they treat themselves well. That part I didn't and, know. No, and it's nice because then they even have like barbecue days or there's been times where he's like, yeah, for Christmas we're having um, a breakfast. So mm -hmm. is there like, a casserole I can take. So of course we have hash brown. We have breakfast casseroles in the freezer meals website and in the club. Yes, of course I'll make you a casserole because we already have one here, take this one. Um, but yeah, sometimes he's like, okay, I need like six packs of bacon or I need six dozen eggs. And they go and make, they make breakfast for the whole crew. That's very cool. Cause it's, it's really mm -hmm. like community and bonding yeah. and all the things. Yeah, yeah. I like that. So if you have an oven at work, you can do this with your baked tortellini. Now, sometimes when we're making a whole lot of meals at once, we end up with prepped things left over. A lot of times that's because I was able to get things on sale in certain quantities as was the case this time, because we were able to get a really large quantity of chicken for a very good price, which we cooked up and cubed. So I knew that we would end up having leftover cooked cubed chicken. I also had prepped some extra onion because onion's always gonna come in handy. But yeah, when we do our big mega sessions, I'll pop a video right there. Mm -hmm. to you should watch one. <laughs> recently did 129 family size meals. And if you're cooking for two, you can take a lot of those and break them down and just split them up so that- Just like we're showing you today. Totally. You just wanna do yours maybe in a bowl first and mix it and then transfer it into a bag rather than doing it directly in the bag. But anyway, um, so I don't know if you realize this, but Charla is really great at creating these meals that these recipes, because we really do have stuff left over at the end because there was a deal or we have half a can of diced tomatoes left. We have, you know, Oh, look at all these chopped carrots. I'm done. We've been doing this for three days and I'm tired and I would like to go home. And she's like, no, no, we got more meals to make. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. So if you're doing a lot of prep, here's a tip for you. Wear shoes. Yes. If you, we learned early wear shoes on the day that you're doing the prep and wear shoes on the day that you're doing the assembly because you are on your feet a lot and if you're not used to it, it's a lot. So this is one of the brain things that Charla made. 
because yeah. you had leftover chicken, you had leftover gnocchi. Mm -hmm. And so leftover gnocchi is not a problem we've ever had before. We've always used all the gnocchi because it was specifically for those recipes. But this time, because they're meals for two, I did run into that problem. So it's not really much of a problem when you can make more meals out of it, is it? No, no, no. So all I did is mix together in a bowl some of that cooked cube chicken that was left over, as well as all the leftover gnocchi. And then I added some chicken broth because there was a recipe that used a tiny little bit of chicken broth. So then I had a lot of chicken broth. I also used diced tomatoes because we buy those in the case lot sales and always have them on hand. I had some frozen peas in the freezer. I threw those in. If we had prepped extra carrots when we did the chicken fried rice, I would have thrown carrots in this. And I'm gonna tell you something. When I prepped the carrots for the chicken fried rice, I knew I only needed like about a cup. And I thought that's an awfully heavy cup. Ah, it's okay. We can put them all in. I really might have had it would have just been a couple of tablespoons, but I did think about it. I'm like, ah, oh, if I did another carrot, I bet you Charlotte would have something to do with it. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so here in this bowl, you're gonna add some of that cooked cube chicken I had left over, all the gnocchi I had left, some fresh parsley that I just happened to have laying around the kitchen, tomato sauce, diced onion, frozen peas, chicken broth, minced garlic because we always have a lot of that on hand, Italian seasoning, salt and pepper. I also added a bay leaf and then when I was stirring it, I realized that actually each bag was going to need its own bay leaf. So I added bay leaves into the other two bags to make sure that everybody was equally bayed. <laughs> and then got those sealed up and into the freezer. So these, of course, are gonna be super simple to cook up. You just bring them to a boil, simmer them a little bit in a stovetop pot. You could also cook them in a small slow cooker if you preferred. This is just gonna be a hearty soup. And it sounds really good. And it's so simple. Yeah, I think it's gonna be, why not? Why it's not? It's kind of an Italian gnocchi chicken soup. And those are, Almost all those things that you mentioned are things that we made in, used in our recipes. There's a ton of variety here and we're not even done. So this next recipe is sloppy joes. And you're like, what? I can just open a can of manwich and pour it over my um, hamburger. And no, no, you're not gonna do that anymore because you're gonna make this because it's way better. <laughs> so in our bowl, we're going to get to start out with our ground beef that's already been browned and cooled because we did it yesterday with our prep, right? And then we're going to add in some minced onion, minced garlic. Now we should have added some green pepper that have, was chopped finely, but we didn't have any for some reason. Because they looked awful at the store. That's why. Okay, because they looked awful at the store and that's a valid reason. Again, freezer meals are really customizable and if they looked awful at the grocery store, it's okay to skip it. What I probably would have done is I would have got a red or a, a yellow pepper, but Charlotte does it because she can actually taste the difference between the peppers and I can't. I didn't know that they tasted different. <laughs> They're so different. You're I with me, right? I can see it with the green pepper and like the other three, but you can taste the difference between like a red, a yellow, and an orange? Yes. I didn't, I don't think you can. So I would have just added that instead. The sweetness intensifies the yeah. more ripe they get. Oh, Rapist. see the things you learn on the Freezer Meals 101 channel. <laughs> you should come back. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really know that and I don't taste a whole lot of difference. So I'd have, I'd have picked a different pepper color and, and thrown sure it in. I'm sure it wouldn't have like ruined the recipe. No. But this is one of our classics and we always make it with green pepper. And so I was like, we're just going to skip the green pepper this time. And that's totally okay. So also without the green pepper, we're going to continue on. We're going to add in some salt and pepper some dry mustard powder, some chili sauce, some tomato sauce, some ketchup, brown sugar, and Worcestershire sauce, and lemon juice. We're gonna mix all of that together until it's really well combined, and then just divide it into our bags. On the day that you go to cook this, you defrost it. It's gonna defrost so fast because it's a nice thin bag. You're gonna heat it up in your skillet, serve it on some toasted hamburger buns, and it doesn't get any simpler than that. And that also tastes like home for some people, you know, right? It's Sloppy Joe's. It's Sloppy Joe's. 
Now we also had some browned sausage left over. Again, because of the pricing, I decided to buy an extra packet. So, you know, when they're buy one, get one, you, you get <laughs> you the other one. Choices. So you might as well brown it all at once because then you're more likely to use it and not have it go to waste in your fridge. You know, those good intentions go to die there sometimes. <laughs> That's called my crisper. <laughs> exactly. So all I did is I took some of that leftover brown sausage, put it into a quart sized freezer bag, of course, took the air out and got it in the freezer because it's so nice to have on hand. We like to have it, you can throw it on nachos, you can throw it into eggs or hash browns. We also really like it when we make homemade flat pizzas. Mm -hmm. So, so good on there. So there's lots of uses for that. It's nice to have. We also have a tater tot casserole in the club that is just, I mean, it's a tater tot casserole, but the bottom of it, you need some browned sausage. So then if I ever go to make that, it's already done for me. So yeah, lots yes. of reasons to have some sausage. It is really nice to have it on hand. You are absolutely right. So we've got pastas, we've got beef dishes, sausage dishes, gnocchi, we've got rice dishes. Chicken. We've got chicken, we've got- Mashed potatoes. <laughs> We sure do. Uh, I don't think we have any vegetarian dishes, which is unlike us. Yes, because we do have a lot of vegetarian dishes. So you should stick with us. You should hit that subscribe button and check back in because we do have a lot of that kind of stuff. What we're hoping for you is that you can take what we've taught you today and you can transfer your own favorites onto that or go check out our website or our club to see what recipes we have there that appeal to you and then you can make your own meal plan and create recipes get them in your freezer do it with a friend because it's more fun way more fun and then when you go to pick up the phone <laughs> to call for that meal delivery hang it back up because there's no need for that anymore. You've got better tasting meals in your freezer and they are ready to go. The best part about that is you order pizza when you want to, not because you have to. We yes. still order pizza, don't get me wrong. There is a time and a place for Chinese food. There's a, we love pizza, but we don't have to because we have a meal on the table every night because we make freezer meals. And even if you don't cook, you can do this. This is something that is so doable. We have people that have been watching our videos that went from never really cooking, only opening packages of things or cans of beans to pretty much gourmet home cooks. And we are so proud of them. So follow along here. We've got your back. We are gonna encourage you. We are totally rooting for you. On. And if you want somewhere else to get some encouragement, then we invite you to join our group on Facebook because it's just the nicest place on earth. <laughs> it really is. And there's a wealth of information in there. There are some freezer meal veterans in there that have probably forgotten more about freezer meals than we'll ever know. That's not really true. We are experts, but you know, you know what I mean? There's a lot of information in there and this is something that anybody can do. And so we want you to join us. All of the links are in the description down below. You will find recipes, you'll find links to our website, the Freezer Meals 101 Club, our Facebook group, all the things to help you get started so that this can be the year. This can be the year that you get rid of the resolutions word and you can replace it with, hey, this is a habit. Yeah. This is what I do. I've got meals in my freezer. You wanna come over and eat? <laughs> That is awesome. Thanks so much for joining us today and we hope you will tune back in again next time. Happy cooking.